Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox back for another episode, and I'm absolutely thrilled today to have Val Harard, the CEO of Safer. I met Val at Compliance Week in April, and I have long wanted to have him on a podcast. It's the way he described the company, it sounded to me as one of the most innovative companies in our space. So with that long-winded introduction, Val, first of all, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me today. No, thank you, Tom. Uh, I really welcome uh, this opportunity to share some of the innovations we're working on with your audience. Could you tell us uh, your professional background? Yes. I've been in financial services uh, all my career. I started out studying mechanical engineering and economics. Yeah, eventually ended up on uh, Wall Street, where I worked uh, as a, an analyst uh, earlier in my career, uh, worked in capital markets and uh, credit risk, market risk, operational risk. Uh, and eventually I ended up uh, in the technology sector where I worked on uh, a few startups. And I ended up working back, going back into capital markets, working um, in the hedge fund industry for a while before I went back on the technology side. And so a few years ago, I ended up at Fidelity Labs, which is uh, the innovation arm of Fidelity Investments. So what is your current role? Yes. So within my current role is I'm the CEO of Safer.ai. Safer is an AI company that was incubated at Fidelity Labs, and we launched the product back 2022 to help meet the compliance needs of the financial services industry. I will set up why I'm so excited to talk to you and why I've wanted to, and it's the following. I started in compliance over 15 years ago, and it was by lawyers for lawyers. And you can imagine how well that went. And as we started to get more innovation, of course, we moved to data and technological solutions. But I always felt the real innovations in compliance would come from people who were not compliance professionals, people who are not lawyers, who saw things in a very different way than I see things. And I think that's exactly what you embody. Um, I'm a son of an engineering professor, so I have some insight into the mind of an engineer, but to bring that skill set to the problems that compliance professionals have, and then overlay that with your entrepreneurial spirit and putting together a company just seemed to me to be a great way for the profession to move forward by having you and your team uh, in it and doing the things that you're doing. So with that introduction, what is Safer AI? Yes. So Cesar AI, uh, and I'll take one step back in, uh, 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 a little bit in terms of why we built it. I think that when you start thinking about the compliance world and what compliance officers and compliance professionals do, in my mind, nothing in financial services produces the sort of high quality data that you need to build AI models as the compliance profession does. And so if you think about what a compliance professional does, they read and understand regulation, and they're looking for inferences in data, whether that's textual data, whether that's transactional data. They're looking for inferences where there might be an infraction of the regulatory rules that keeps the market fair and safe for everyone, from retail investors to institutional investors. And so... When you start looking at AI and you start thinking about an area where AI can have an impact, what you look for is whether or not there's a rich set of data that's been human validated because that tends to produce the best models. And so in that sense, the work that compliance officers do is really helpful in terms of building AI systems that's capable to solve a lot of the mundane problems that compliance uh, needs to deal with. And so the idea behind Safer was really to look at that rich set of data made available to us by Fidelity to essentially build models in three separate areas. One of the first areas that we tackled is marketing communications compliance. So this is the idea that anything that an investor could potentially see needs to be fair and balanced. It needs to meet certain guidelines so that investors are not being taken advantage of. Uh, a lot of that work tends to be somewhat mundane. So the idea was 
can we build an AI engine that can synthesize what a compliance officer can, would typically look for and where in areas where human judgment is really required, leave that to humans, human professional compliance people to do. So the idea is to, was to really build a capability that could help a compliance officer do their work faster but also to put it in the hands of people who are actually creating the content, such as marketers, uh, or even you might think of a um, portfolio manager who wants to write a thought leadership piece, but who's not a compliance professional, what they are saying still needs to be uh, compliant. As they are creating that content, uh, we can help them keep that content more compliant in a very similar way that you would have a grammar check, for example, in the word processing system. So let's say that you're us using Microsoft Word. There's a way in which you can check your spelling, check your um, grammar. You can do those kinds of check uh, for compliance now with the capabilities that Safer built. So that was one area. The second area was really in trying to electronic communications compliance is a big aspect of what we do in financial services. But the way in which the industry tackles that problem right now is that essentially messages or archived from different channels or archives. And then after the fact, a compliance officer or a number of compliance officers sift through that to see if there is anything that's potentially non-compliant. Our idea was that you could potentially help solve a lot of that upfront. If at the instant that someone is creating an email or communications, you can check whether or not something has, for example, insider information, whether or not something has some sort of a quid pro quo let's exchange in the communications and alert uh, the creator, then they can take corrective action. So that way we help uh, compliance officers get their work done much faster as well. And then the third uh, area is in the KYC and AML, especially when you are dealing with large volumes of data. We've built capabilities to help you sift through that data and find potential risks that may be hiding in plain, uh, in plain sight. Val, the enforcement actions and risk about, around internal communications, I think, are very well known. We've had a huge amount of fines by uh, FINRA, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and other regulators. And certainly, AML KYC programs are well known, but I'm very intrigued around your work around compliance on communications from financial advisors to potential customers. Is that a message that resonates with a, a potential customer or a financial advisor you sit down and talk to? Yes. And so this is the new escapability that, that we've built. And so there are some upcoming announcements in terms of the release of that capability, but we have been previewing it and speaking with uh, industry about this capability. And we think that if we are able to, for example, a lot of people use Microsoft products to communicate, such as Outlook, for example. If we are able to embed a set of capabilities in Outlook, such that when a message is being uh, created, we can check whether or not there are potential violations, that then helps reduce both the amount of work that needs to be done on the archiving part, but also what it helps the industry do is embed a risk culture into the work that people do every day, right? Because uh, when you think about, for example, adaptive risk management, right? Which is the idea that if you are able to embed risk analysis tools in different areas where there could potentially be risks, that you have a much better chance of not only catching the risk, but also providing suggestions on how the risk can be corrected. And you're also reducing the amount of work that needs to be done on the back end. And you are helping to educate the people who are not compliance experts in terms of these are the things that are potentially non-compliant. And so you are providing this continuous education, if you will. And so far, the reception, again, it's been more or less private previews that we've done with a few industry colleagues, but so far the reception has been very positive. And then we are looking forward to making uh, a broader announcement uh, in a few weeks about the availability 
the general availability of that, cap uh, of that capability. Now, let me see if I can translate into compliance speak what I thought I heard you say. What I thought I heard you say was you're creating a culture of compliance by embedding the tool literally on the front lines for employees can access that tool and see if what they're proposing or what they want to put out to the public is within compliance and they're getting almost instantaneous feedback so that it's, it's seamless and efficient and helps them create a message while protecting themselves and the company. Would that be a fair assessment? Yes, so that's a fair assessment. And, and we think ultimately that protects investors and that makes the industry safer, uh, pun intended. And so we think that this sort of capability holds a lot of promise. And it also strikes me that by delivering that service in a f efficient technological tool that allows the frontline employee to see compliance is not Dr. No from the land of no, but they're actually facilitating me selling or me at least marketing. That's going to drive your culture forward too. Would that be also fair? No, that's a fair assessment. It's about ultimately for the firms reducing friction that helps you get to market your messaging faster, quicker, and that also helps and while keeping investors safe. And so if everyone benefits. I did not expect to hear that from this podcast. That's great. Let me turn now to some AI issues and ask you about how do you think through or how do you explore with a client AI ethics? Yes. So I think a lot of, that's a very important topic. So thank you for that question. It is one that every time that we have to fill out a request for a proposal, that questions gets asked. And so it's a very important one. It also shows the measure to which that the industry as a whole is really taking the necessary steps to make sure that AI is deployed in an ethical and efficient way. And so one of the questions that people ask is really, excuse me, what is the provenance of the data? Where did the data come from? Because in AI, if you use data that is biased, the predictions and what comes out on the other side will tend to be biased as well. So one way to think about it is if you are trying to make a prediction about what kind of car someone is going to buy, and you start with data that has predominantly blue cars versus green cars, let's say, for example, the model will tend to recommend blue cars, even though you might want to prefer a green car. And so a lot of the work that we do with NSAFER is really to pay attention on the data. And so we have a set of internal mechanism that we go through to make sure that the data gets reviewed by uh, SMEs. And also because we are part of a larger organization where there are certain procedures that we have to go through that includes, for example, a review by an internal algorithmic review board that reviews the algorithm that asks a lot of questions in terms of which data are you using? Where did that data One of the steps we're taking to try and remove the modeling side, there's uh, the end user side of it, which is what is this model being deployed to do? What is the intended usage? Is it going to be used in an ethical way, in a, in a way in which in financial services, for example, investors are protected? And so those are all considerations. And that process in and of itself takes a while to usually work through with the various themes that overlook what we do. But I think the most important point uh, on uh, in AI ethics is really to have in place a well-defined data governance process in terms of who owns the data, do you have the right to collect that data, where did that data come from, and what vetting do you do on the data? How does the AI-powered screening, or how rather how Safer adapted this into its solution? Yes. I think, again, we benefit from the fact that we are part of a larger organization and the fact that a lot of these processes and a lot of the data we were very fortunate enough uh, to collect from uh, an industry leader that's very well respected. And so consequently, 
the amount of work that we had to do within the Cipher team was really double check, if you will, that the data that we are using, in fact, we had the permission to use it, but also to build within the Cipher team itself a data strategy and a set of professionals who are charged with reviewing that data and check for all the things that I uh, referenced earlier. I wrote a question out and I feel like you've answered it throughout this podcast, but I'm going to ask it anyway to make sure I got it right, which is what is adaptive risk management? Sure. And so in my mind, adaptive risk management, I feel that, as I mentioned earlier, my background in capital markets and doing risk management, I feel that it's with, by and large, your industry has been doing it for a while. And so for me, I, I take a very generic uh, definition of it, although there are specific use cases where you do have specific definitions. So for me, adaptive risk management is really the fact that risk is always dynamic. It's always changing. And so therefore, if you can embed risk analysis tools into the decision-making processes and the other processes that people are involved in, as those processes change because of business reasons, because of regulation, because of a number of factors, then because you have the risk analysis tools embedded as part of the decision-making process, you are then able to adapt your risk management as the environment changes over time. Uh, clearly, it's not something that, that happens overnight. It takes a while. So an application of that would be what I spoke about earlier, which is this idea. If you can embed a way to check for FINRA Rule 2210, for example, and the content creation process, when content is getting created, by marketers who are not marketing professionals, then you've embedded a dynamic content creation process that takes into account FINRA Rule 2210, for example, that governs marketing regulation. And so to me, that would be an example of adaptive risk management, which is different if you think about it from the way in which the industry used to operate before, where content creators would create content, send it to a central team, team that does all of the compliance review and then there's a back and forth that happens. This way, the process is more dynamic and more adaptive. And so someone on the front end can be making changes and checking for compliance before they finally submit it because it still needs to be reviewed by a compliance uh, team. But what, they, what the compliance team is getting is closer to being compliant. Uh, so that would be a, a manifestation issued or an implementation of an adaptive risk management process. Oh, how can AI-powered compliance help companies identify bad actors who might target compliance blind spots? Yes. One of the things, so this is really the third part of what, we've, of what I talked about where we, where we play our roles. And within Safer, we have this capability of taking a lot of data, and that could include possible customers that you have to onboard, that could include, let's say, just a large population. Right, And we can try and find publicly available data that ties an entity to that data. So let's say someone says, okay, I want to find out if there is someone in my group of accounts or customers that have publicly available data around embezzlement, for example. That's a lot to try and do a Google search for that. On a specific name, let's say, for example, you're going to get a lot of data and you're going to get a lot of, quite honestly, noise. And so what we've done is build a set of capabilities where we can take an entity and cast a very wide net across over 14 billion web pages and other data sources, so 14 billion data sources, and very quickly surface very specific data about a very specific entity that you are interested in. And then from that, you can lead you, you can do your own investigation, but we can surface all of the data to provide you a lead so that you can start your investigation much more in a much more effective way. I'd like to ask you to maybe look down the road into the future a little bit and ask, what do you, or what is the future of AI power tools for compliance professionals in your opinion? 
again, I'll go back to something that I said earlier. I think that it will keep evolving because of the fact that in financial services, in my opinion, compliance processes create high quality data because of uh, one, the quality of the people who are involved in the field. And two, their work product is exactly the sort of data that you need in order for you to generate high quality, high quality AI models. So for example, to take something outside of financial services, Microsoft has done a phenomenal job, for example, in building what's called a Phi 3 model, where essentially what they've proven is the fact that if you start with high quality, almost call it textbook-like data, you can actually build models that are smaller that have the same state of the art performance result as much bigger uh, models, right? So to put that in, 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 in kind of like uh, more linear terms, imagine that you have a model that's been built with all of the information that's uh, on the internet and you are to try and use that model versus you take a model that's been trained on highly specialized, high quality textbook data the model that's been trained in high quality on high quality data, even though it's less, it will outperform that bigger model uh, in this specific task. And so this is part of the underlying thesis behind Safer. It's the fact that if we start with high quality data produced by compliance professionals, that we can reduce a lot of the friction for things that are fairly mundane that a compliance officer would otherwise spend time on and have the compliance officers focus on the higher quality reasoning that is required when human judgment needs to be used in a compliance, in a compliance way. So are there any new safer innovations that you might be able to give us a little teaser on that you have coming up? Yes. And so I talked a little bit about uh, the fact that we, we are going to be making an announcement or a set of capabilities that are working on where, for example, the proliferation of large language models in the industry and the use of large language models in the industry is becoming more prevalent. One of the distinguishing characteristics of these large language models is that they cannot produce content or generate content that is compliant out of the box. So our ability to actually take a large language model that someone is using or a small language model to generate content and make the content that comes out automatically compliant is a capability where we've made a lot of progress on that front. And so stay tuned for some forthcoming announcement in terms of the availability of some of those capabilities. And so one, one way that you might think about it, imagine that someone is using chat GPT, for example, and they need for chat GPT to produce things that compliant with financial services regulations. We've built capabilities that would allow that to happen. Well, unfortunately, we are near the end of our time for this episode. But before we leave, I wanted to ask you if our listeners wanted to perhaps connect with you or find out more information about Safer, what would be the best place or places for them to go? Yes. So you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd, I'd be happy to provide you more information, but a more effective way because I'm always on the road speaking with clients, speaking with industry professionals, would be to go to our website, safer.ai. So that's S-A-I-S-R dot A-I dot com. I'm well, sorry, that, do... dot A-I, without the dot com. Uh, yes, uh, we're going to put those in the show notes. Uh, I wanted to thank you again for taking the time to visit with me, and I look forward to continuing this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, and again, uh, I uh, enjoyed speaking to your audience. And I look forward to possibly doing this again.